November 1963 is the cover date of 14 comics released by Marvel Comics. Many early Silver Age superhero books here on this list. And we're going to look at each one of them and look at their historical importance, their rarity, and the increase of their value year by year. Starting with Amazing Spider-Man number six. This is the 88th Silver Age superhero comic from Marvel since they started up again in 1961 in this genre. This book is a major key with the first appearance of the lizard and art by Steve Ditko. It's the 10th most valuable, valuable first appearance Marvel comic of the year and print run estimated at around 175,000 copies. If we look at the CGC census, we can see that the numbers are growing quickly. Over 2,000 copies in all conditions graded. There are 13 9.6s or better. Heritage Auctions has sold over 400 copies in the last 20 years. Here's the classic cover with a silver background. And it even says the Marvel Age of Comics is here. And this is actually the second anniversary of Marvel getting back into superheroes, starting with Fantastic Four, number one. Using the Overstreet Annual Price Guide, we can see the growth of this book in all grades, low to high, raw copies over a 16-year period. You can see it hasn't done much movement at all in low grades. In high grades, it's basically doubled. But check out eBay past sales and the GP analysis to find out how the graded copies have been doing. And of course, the high grade copies will be breaking records all the time. Overall in the census, there are three 9.8s and 10 9.6s. There are 42 of the UK price variants graded, but the highest is an 8.0. The next big book that came out the same month on our list, and this is a major book, Avengers number two. So this is the second appearance of the team. Print run estimated at possibly in the 200,000 range. What else can we tell you? First appearance of the Space Phantom. And Jack Kirby did the cover, yellow background, featuring Iron Man still in his original outfit, and Thor and the new Giant Man. 1,600 copies graded in total on the CGC census. 18 9.6s are better heritage, also many sales. In Over Street, we can see the book has doubled in lower grades, and it has more than tripled in high grades raw. On the census, there are five 9.8s, 13 9.6s. UK price variant, the best copy is an 8.5. The next book on our list, we're going through the titles alphabetically. So next is Fantastic Four number 20 and features the first appearance of the Molecule Man. Interior art by Jack Kirby, print run estimated at 200,000 copies. A lot less copies of this book on the census in general, only 685, but there are 12 9.6s or better. Heritage has sold not as many, 166. In the Overstreet Price Guide, the book has not doubled in low grades in this long time period, uh, but in high grades, it has tripled. On the census, there are two 9.8s, 10 9.6s. The UK pence version is quite rare, only four copies graded, the highest being a seven. Journey into Mystery 98 is next on our list. This is Thor's title as it has been since number 83. It's the first appearance of the Cobra and he's called Human Cobra in his first story. Jack Kirby art and print run estimated 187,000 copies. CGC census has very few copies graded in total, 349, but there are 12 9.6s. Heritage has sold very few in this book. In the Overstreet price guide, it has doubled in lower grades, but look how cheap it actually is. This is a very affordable first appearance book. It's gone more than triple though in highest grades. On the census, there are three 9.8s and nine 9.6s. None of the UK price variants have been graded at all. Now, at this time, of course, Stanley was not just writing superhero books. He was doing Westerns and teen books. So we got Kid Cold Outlaw, Millie the Model, Modeling with Millie, Patsy Walker, and we even got Two Gun Kid coming out. So those were popular genres for them as well. And those books were probably selling just as many copies. But we're focusing on the superheroes and we're including Sergeant Fury just because Sergeant Fury eventually does tie into the superhero universe. 
So Sergeant Fury, number four, still a very early issue, obviously fourth appearance. And it features the death of Junior Juniper and the first appearance of Pam Holly. This is Jack Kirby cover and art, print run, estimated at 200,000 copies. Sort of a yellow background for most of the cover. And this being a war title, many collectors and completists in the early days did not include collecting this title. So this book is rarer in general <coughs> than the true su superhero books. Only 123 copies ever graded, four 9.6s much scarcer in general, but not a lot of movement on the census. You can see the book has not even doubled in 16 years. It's almost tripled in highest grades raw. On the census, one 9.8, three 9.6s, none of the UK price variants have been graded. Next on our list is Strange Tales 114. This is the 14th issue in a row featuring the Human Torch. And so we're going to look at all the key things about this book. It features the first appearance of Victoria Bentley. And what's interesting about this book is Captain America is on the cover. But we would learn that it's not actually him in the story. It's somebody pretending to be him. However, this is the first Silver Age Captain America cover. So this, I believe, should be a bigger key than it is. Um, so this book features also the third appearance of Doctor Strange, who was not in the last two issues. What's also interesting with Human Torch being on the cover, this is kind of uh, going back and reliving the Golden Age, uh, World War I type cover of Captain America and the Human Torch together. So this was their first cover appearance together, literally since the late 40s. Um, oh, except they were probably on the cover of Young Men in 1954. So that would probably be nine years then. Uh, so we got Jack Kirby and Dick Ayer's cover. Print run estimated at 189,000 copies. 640 on the census in total. 12, 9.6s or better. Heritage has not sold many of this at all. Overstreet Price Guide. Again, the book has not even doubled in low grades in this long time period, but it's almost tripled in high grades. On the census, there are four 9.8s. The UK price variant, there's one graded and 9.2, but very few graded in total. Tales of Suspense, 47. Now this is Iron Man's title, which had started at number 39. First appearance of the Melter. This has a Jack Kirby cover. This issue also has a 9.9 .9 graded copy. Print run estimated at 188,000 copies. CGC census, again, not many copies graded. Iron Man's original costume. We've got 428 copies in total, but only six 9.6s. Heritage has not sold many at all. On the Overstreet Annual Price Guide, we can see low grades have tripled, which means that uh, highest grades have done more than triple. On the census, we had the 9.9 plus two 9.8s, three 9.6s. And very few of the Pence editions, 7.5 being the highest one out there. Tales to Astonish 49. This is a very cool key issue. Professor Henry Pym makes the change from his small Ant-Man to the much more impressive Giant Man. So we've got Giant Man first appearance on the cover. We also got Wasp. Very cool cover. Print run estimated at 189,000 copies. And 505 copies graded in total, 9, 9.6s. Heritage has not sold many of these. I believe this book is undervalued. In the Overstreet Price Guide, it is more than doubled in lower grades, but still quite affordable book because it's a cheap book even in the highest grades. But it has gone up almost five times in high grade raw. On the census, we have one 9.8 and eight 9.6s. The Pence variant is quite rare. There is one 8.5 on the census. We have got finally at the end of our list, X-Men number two. Yes, it's the second appearance of course of the X-Men. And they have to protect the White House in this issue created by Stanley and Jack Kirby. Print run estimated at 175,000 copies. Now this book was not as popular a seller as most of Marvel's other books but it did run for seven years. 
There are a lot of copies graded now though, however, because now the X-Men are considered so important. We've got over 1800 graded, only eight, 9.6 is their better heritage, almost at 400 copies. Red background. <coughs> On the sense, or sorry, the Overstreet price guide, very little movement in lower grades. That's not a very good investment overall, averaging out at going up a dollar a year in low grades. But in high grades, it's almost doubled raw. And on the census, there are two 9.8s and six 9.6s. The UK price variant, a lot more copies graded, 22 of them, but still the highest copy is an 8.0. Now, what we're going to do next is compare these books on the CGC census to see just exactly how rare they are, which ones are the popular ones. Interestingly, it's Amazing Spider-Man number six that has the most copies graded in total. Simply being an early Spider-Man issue and the first appearance of the lizard. After that, it's X-Men number two. The, the ultra popularity of the X-Men now <coughs> has got many copies graded. And then of course, Avengers number two. Lowest on the census, predictably would be Sergeant Fury number four being a war title. But after that, it's Journey into Mystery 98 with only 349 copies graded. That's not much at all. Overall for highest grades, remember Tales of Suspense 47 has a 9.9 .9 here. But beyond that, all the other books do have at least a 9.8. The most common being Avengers number two. There are five copies. Sergeant Fury has only one and Tales to Astonish 49 has only one. After that, the books obviously become more common. Uh, Sergeant Fury definitely, again, stays the rarest overall. Small numbers in all conditions. And what's interesting, if you look at the average grade of all the copies graded, the more copies that are, are on the census usually means that the average grade will be the lowest. Interestingly here, it's actually X-Men number two that has the lowest overall grade, meaning that half of the copies on the census grade lower than a 4.99. So that's a lot of low grade copies on the census. And the highest on the census though, is Journey into Mystery 98. Because there's so few copies graded, they tend to be more high grade copies. So there you go. That's all the Marvel comics released with the cover date of November, 1963. It was the second anniversary of Marvel doing silver or superhero books again. And remember I have a episode for every month so keep following my channel. Please subscribe and we'll see you again next week with another month.